for persisting with this series through Ephesians chapter 2. And uh, I reckon, you know, once the pandemic uh, alters and we're offered a bit more freedom, we're going to understand Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13, which is the verse for today, uh, a lot more personally. Because at the moment, uh, we have to keep ourselves apart from one another. My sister recently went for a socially distanced picnic with one of our daughters and she said it was bizarrely unnatural having to keep at a distance from somebody you're normally quite close to. Well, the sort of distancing that is being talked about in Ephesians 2 is slightly different, of course. Let me read the verse to you. It says, Now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. So it's talking about something quite different. Uh, it's, it's talking about being separated from God because of our sin and unable to draw near to him. And it uses words like separated, excluded, foreigners. It's what we are uh, outside of God by nature. Uh, now, uh, as Christians, we often try to say that uh, God isn't far away. That's one of the explanations we give when people say, uh, talk about God. And the Bible does, in fact, talk that way. The Apostle Paul, talking to Ephesian, uh, Athenian philosophers, uh, mentioned that God isn't far from each of us. But he also didn't play down the vast gulf there is between us. There is this huge gap between us and God, which we cannot bridge by ourselves. And the Bible also talks about that very clearly. Um, in the imagery, for instance, of the building of the temple, you can see it there, the whole design of it. Uh, talks about <clears throat> the, this difficult combination of being able to approach but not able to approach. Um, the, the temple was there to meet with God, but it was the only place where you could formally go and know that you would meet with God. And moreover, when you got there, you didn't go in. It was a priest who went in on your own behalf, indicating there is this distance and something has to be done to... Uh, to, to lessen the distance. And the priests themselves, when they went into the temple, they weren't allowed just to breeze into the presence of God. Uh, there was a curtain preventing access to the, to the Ark of God, and they could only go in directly once a year. So, you know, if you are struggling with the idea of faith and of God, and there's a lot of philosophical stuff out there about how God is mysterious and incomprehensible, and uh, we just can't know him, well, actually, you are far from him. Um, it's right, you're on the outside. If you don't know him for yourself, then you are far away. You need somebody to bring you near. That's exactly what this passage is about, and that's why it's so powerful. It's what Jesus does. And we celebrate the life and death of Jesus as one who brings us near to God. We celebrate that beginning at Christmas with the incarnation, thinking about Jesus stepping down from heaven to come to us physically and really and become one of us so he understands us and knows us and he's not far from us in that sense but of course supremely he does it uh, on the cross as it says in this verse it says by his blood it's in his death that he bridges that gap between us um, it's sin that causes the barrier between us and god sin causes death and finally it will ult ultimately mean that we are separated from god altogether which is eternal death but uh, God always accepted uh, the death of a substitute, one who would take the place of the sinner. It's expressed in the Old Testament sacrifices and it's there in the death of Jesus. Jesus is sent and accepted as the perfect substitute to remove our sins and to bring us back to God. The Gospels actually show that uh, in, a, in a little description they give of uh, when, the, when Jesus died, and cried out his last words. He says, at that moment, the, t the temple curtain was torn uh, from top to bottom. It was torn to show that uh, the way was open from top to bottom to show that it was God who was doing this. And so what the verse tells us and what the New Testament makes it clear is the way to God is open. Those who are far off can draw near. And through Jesus, God isn't a stranger kept at a distance. He's your heavenly father. And you can go to him whenever you like, wherever you are, and you don't need a priest to do it for you, at least of all me. And you can do that, actually, if you feel far from him. Uh, we could probably spend a lot of time thinking about those occasions in which we do feel God is far, that uh, we're lost or struggling, um, perhaps illness, depression, 
change of circumstances, they can all cause this sense that God is far from us. But he isn't far from us any longer. That's just the way we're thinking about it. Uh, he's near. And so the, 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 what the, the, the recommendation is, really, come on, don't keep your distance. You don't have to do that any longer. The door's open and you can go right in and give him a big hug. We'll see you tomorrow.